Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. So where are they from? So they have um, Azeri background, mm -hmm. like well, um, the mother was Turkish and the father was Azeri. Mm -hmm. It was actually that place where the Armenians conquered and um, gave them land. Mm -hmm. But they're considered from Azerbaijan and uh, the mother's side is considered Turkish. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of the people, they didn't, they didn't like the fact that she was um, getting married to somebody outside of the culture once again. Mm -hmm. And um, they had a lot of weird practices. Some people were Sufi, some people were Shia, mm. and they wouldn't pray without a stone on the ground. Mm. Other people, they had Muslim names, but they told you straight that they are not, not Muslim. Muslim yeah. And they would be drinking vodka. And um, I've never seen anything like it in my life, mm -hmm. never. Yeah, those, those um, Soviet countries, yeah. the former Soviet countries, they like that, you know, yeah. where the communists came and... There's so much Russian jacked, influence. Yeah, jacked up their countries, yeah. right? Yeah. Really messed them up. Mm. And um, I, um, her, her mother, she was not happy about the whole thing. Mm. But the father, because he was a practicing Muslim, mm. he wanted me to marry his daughter. Mm. So he pushed for it. Mm. And he didn't just push for it, he was a real man. Mm. He took me into the Caucasian mountains of Azerbaijan mm. where these people have never seen a black person before in their life. Yeah, yeah. Police would literally pull me over yeah. just to look at my skin. <laughs> <laughs> From then I knew I would never want to be a celebrity. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. to have that kind of attention, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so draining. Yeah. People want to take their pictures with you. People want to take you home to meet their 90-year-old grandmother because she's never seen a black person in her life. Yeah. Come eat dinner with us. Yeah. And it's like, it's insane. Mm. You go to the balcony just to get some fresh air. Mm. There's, you see flashes of light. People are trying to take your picture. <laughs> it's so crazy. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to isolate me. Mm -hmm. Even though he didn't speak my language, mm. he knew that if he spent a week with me mm. in those mountain, in like this little hut in the mountain, he would see my character show yeah. through. Mm. So by the time we came down from the mountain, he was all for it. Mm. That's it. I want you to marry Muhammad. That's the end of it. Mm. And the mother, she wasn't happy. I don't care. She's talking. The mother is saying, I don't want my daughter to marry a Wahhabi. I'm mm. like, <laughs> I never heard this term before. So yeah. I was like, what's, what's a Wahhabi? A Wahhabi? Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, um, they, you know, they have their beards and they pull their pants above their ankles and they're uh, always praying. And I'm looking at her husband, <laughs> and I'm like, so isn't he a Wahhabi? <laughs> and then she's like, ah, 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 and starts screaming in their language. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me just shut up. <laughs> and she was going nuts, but yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Allah made it easy, yeah. and we got yeah. married. Yeah. She had a brother who was exactly the same age as me, mm -hmm. and he was proper, like a businessman. He made sure he, he works on um, graphic designs for like buildings and stuff like this, architecture. Mm. And um, they didn't want us living there, so we said, okay, we're gonna go study in Egypt for a few years. So we went to Egypt, and um, she got pregnant, but I got a phone call that her mother got cancer. Mm. Some cancer right under here, and uh, we were sending money to Turkey to get her some chemotherapy and to help her to get better. But the mother, she wasn't getting better, she was getting worse. Mm. So the doctor said that she had eight months to live, but her brother called me and told me not to tell her that he's on the phone. Mm. And then he started telling me that um, the mother is going to die and she's gonna slowly deteriorate and become skinnier over the next eight months until she dies. Mm. And his sister, my wife, she's two, uh, two months pregnant and if she has to see this, it's going to hurt her mm. and she's going to become so emotionally concerned she might have a miscarriage or your baby could be born with defect mm. you don't want that so try to keep her away from seeing her mother mm. try to keep it to voice calls and stuff and i was like 
I don't know how I can keep her from her mother. Mm -hmm. But he was making good sense and he kept trying to push at it. So I said, I'll try to do what I can do. Mm -hmm. So I would try to make sure that it was short and I tried to make sure that it's on voice call. And um, whenever there was a situation where she would just push at it and she put on the cam, he would quickly come and close the cam and say that it was some connection problem. Mm. Um, after we had a healthy baby, alhamdulillah, and the mother, within a month, she died. Mm. And um, she wanted to take the baby to go and visit the mother's grave. So they were, she wanted to be buried in Azerbaijan near the father's uh, town. Mm. So they took her body there she went there and then she went to go and visit the grave and then she started changing and acting different and then i was asking her what's the problem and she's like you kept me from seeing my mother in her last months and i was like i didn't do that it was your brother who asked me to do that because he wanted you to have a healthy baby mm. and when she went and asked the brother he denied everything Wow. So I started talking. That's, that's the Islamic Brotherhood we're talking yeah, about. That's exactly what it is. Mm. And I started talking to the brother and I'm like, why are you doing this? You were the one who told me this. I would never think of something like this on my own. Mm. And it caused so much problems with us. And um, he said that he can't live with his father. And there's nobody to stay with him now that the mother is dead. And um, he said he just had a baby. He just had a baby, mm. and he needs to he needs to um, have somebody who can who can be with his uh, mother. Mm. I mean, who can be with the father? So we're, all, we're almost done now. So he asked me. Um, he he told me that if I want to come to a live in Azerbaijan in the home with the father in that tiny little apartment, the one bedroom apartment, I can come there and raise his kid. But he needs her to stay here, mm. to stay with the father. And don't worry, your son will grow up with his cousin, Attila, mm. his son. Mm. I say, like, so you, yes, you planned this. Exactly. You planned this for like the last eight, nine months. Mm. And you put me into this and had me thinking that it was something else, but you're just trying to bury me. Mm. And I was like, subhanAllah, man, you have one of the names of the sons of, the, of, of Ali, one mm. of the grandsons of the Prophet Sallallahu Your name is Hassan. And he's like, I tell you straight, Muhammad, you see me, I drink vodka, I smoke cigarettes. My name is Hassan, but I don't believe anything in Islam. I think it's all fairy tales. Wow. It's, it's things that we tell our children, stories that we tell our children. Wow. And um, I was like, but you got to tell your sister the truth. And he said, you're welcome to come here if you want, but I need her to stay here. And that was the last time I spoke to him. Mm. And she cut me off. She wouldn't send me any pictures of the child. She wouldn't, because like, she completely blamed me for stopping her from seeing her mother mm. on uh, um, for the dying months of her life. Wow, man. And he allowed her to think that mm. because he had his own agenda for her. Mm -hmm. They don't care. Mm -hmm. We're black. We can easily be written off and yep. thrown under the bus. Yeah. Who's going to come to our aid? Mm -hmm. Only Allah. Only Allah. Only Allah. Only Allah. And that's, that's the scary thing about this community mm. because it's not one person you're going to find it with mm. and it's not one place you're going to find you're going to find it everywhere, everywhere. yeah it doesn't matter these, these stories are a dime a dozen there's yep. so many so many of them right you travel to Qatar you're going to experience racism with the Muslims mm. you're in uh, Ottawa you're going to find uh, racism with the Muslims you go to Toronto you go to America mm -hmm. you go to anywhere in the world Mm -hmm. You find Muslims, you're going to find them to be racist against you. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, one thing I found beautiful in uh, America, when I would go to some of the gatherings in America, they really embraced me like a brother. Yep. And they loved me. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they said things to me that nobody's ever said to me. Like It's not like you have to learn this to become a better Muslim. You have to become like us. They'll be like, you have been employed by the greatest employer. Mm -hmm. And he is employing you for the greatest work and he will give you the greatest pay mm. as long as you do the job mm -hmm. and we have to take care of each other and they're really talking to me like a brother mm. and embracing me although their masjids are poor mm. run down there's crackheads outside mm. Arab prostitutes around Detroit mm. and like standing in front of the masjid mm. guys selling drugs but you had these black brothers who like tried to just make any little situation and tried to make it the, into the, real Islam. Yeah, yeah.
and I couldn't I couldn't understand how I could find that after being Muslim I'd say three months mm. but traveling the world over the last 16 17 years as a Muslim I have never found anything to compare to that mm. and everywhere I went was way richer than that yeah <laughs> it was a better condition yeah masjids that were like made Massive, of gold yeah. and had like 50 60 thousand dollar chandeliers Massive chandeliers yep the chandeliers in the masjid That's but you go to like uh, the mm -hmm. Arab countries the Arabs don't want to pray beside the Pakistanis and the Indians mm -hmm. you're the workers you're the slaves don't touch me yeah you guys pray in the back mm -hmm. and then you go to like um, other North African countries um, they have racism within their these people could be the exact same color mm. Moroccans could be the exact same color mm. they don't want to pray with that Moroccan because we're from the north and you're from the south mm -hmm. my last name is Ben Jaloun. I have a French last name and you have one of those uh, Moroccan last names yeah Berber or whatever one of those Berber last names yeah. not knowing that the only reason why you have a French last name is because your great great grandmother was raped by the colonizers mm. yeah. and you ended up with blue eyes a little bit of yellow hairs mm -hmm. and a French last name and now that's your pride mm. and somebody who speaks your original language is considered less yeah it's so disturbing mm -hmm. you go all over the Muslim world and you're finding this mm -hmm. so it's not like racism is something that we're saying needs to stop to black people you will never enter into Islam properly mm -hmm. until you learn to stop racism mm -hmm. in yourself yeah whether it's with your own brother from your own country and you guys come from two different tribes Somalis Mm. or you guys come from the same type of uh, country Pakistan India you're all Indians mm. and you guys hate each other Pakistanis hate Indians mm -hmm. and it could be you hate somebody because they're black or you hate somebody because they're this and that until that stuff is gone you will never be able to enter into Islam holy because there is some kind of hatred sickness in your heart that is preventing you from loving Muslims mm -hmm. and until you love for your brother what you love for yourself you can't say you have entered into this deen wholeheartedly mm -hmm. and that's that's the, that's that's the that's reality, reality of it yeah. that's the reality of it mm -hmm. you hold on to this last sickness in you of racism and discrimination this tribalism this cultural pride you're never going to be able to enter Islam holy you could be the one praying and fasting all day you could be the one who's going for Hajj every year, who's going for Umrah every, every, every few months until you can learn to destroy this racism and this discrimination inside of you that has flooded the community that didn't even come from Islam. You are always going to have some crutch that is holding you back from becoming a real Muslim and tasting the sweetness of Iman. Well, not only that, it, the, racism doesn't just affect the community on an individual to individual basis. Yeah. It affects the entire Ummah. It affects the entire Ummah and it's a huge um, stepping stone, uh, op an obstacle which is preventing the unity of the Muslims. That's another big yeah. one. Yeah. Mm. And that's what I was telling you when I was saying, like, uh, I've met people who were not even black, mm -hmm. they were white Canadians mm -hmm. who became Muslim and hated the discrimination and racism done in the Muslim community so much that they left because there's like how can you guys be brothers how can there be brotherhood here mm -hmm. or like even it could be a white sister and she was feeling like she loves all these Muslims as wholeheartedly mm -hmm. she goes into the Somali Masjid and she's trying to do volunteer work volunteering her time for their programs mm -hmm. And those sisters are pointing at her and laughing. Mm. It made her feel so humiliated to even wear the hijab. Mm. She left. Mm. She left that, that place and never came back. She left the hijab. Mm. And slowly, slowly the shaitan worked with the waswas until she left Islam. Mm -hmm. And I could tell you a hundred different stories about these kind of things. Yep. Where people are coming and going. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not just that they're making the choice. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to be accountable because when when people become Muslim, it's up to the Muslims to have that facility for them to flourish as a Muslim. And if yep. you don't create that environment, sure they can get in problems for getting into sins. Sure they can get in problems for leaving in Islam. Mm -hmm. But you're also accountable for what you haven't done as a Muslim to support their Islam. Mm -hmm. It's like this. We come to Islam because we believe it. 
But when we see the people who don't actually believe in the thing that they say that they believe, it's like we are in, we're infantile in this religion. We're just starting out, and we're looking at them, these people like, well, these people don't even believe what they're saying to begin with, so it can't be the truth. Yeah. That's that's how that's how they're seeing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how, that's how they look at it. You know, and it's it's the the racism thing, man. It's something that's extremely damaging to to the Muslims. It is definitely. Mm. It's it's really scary because like even when you say like um, they're looking at like there could this could never be the truth. You don't see the unity. Mm -hmm. You don't see the brotherhood. You don't. You just see another cultural arrogant group that's creating their own cultural center. Mm. That's far away from your culture mm. like you could say we come from this place we come from that place but we're Canadians we're born over here this is the culture that I'm a part of I expect to see a certain type of culture of this culture when I go to the uh, masjid mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about like um, you have to promote things that are against Islam simple things from the culture mm -hmm. organization timeliness being um being um doing what doing what you say and saying what you do yeah living up to your words mm -hmm. simple things like this how can you organize as a community when you can't even organize the shoes in front of the masjid <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it bothered me every country i went to because people would just run to the masjid yeah. slip off their slippers go inside yeah. and you literally have to walk on people's yeah. slippers yeah. to get inside the masjid and people, it's, it's a little bit embarrassing, you know. They get offended yeah. that you walked on their slippers. You made my shoes dirty. Mm -hmm. Why are your shoes in front of the masjid? There's a yeah. shoe rack in there. It is embarrassing because the Muslims in general are the ones who taught the world cleanliness. Yeah. And now the Muslims are learning cleanliness from the kuffar, you know. Because, that, uh, that scared me even yeah. in Morocco. Yeah. People would, would only take a shower on Juma, mm -hmm. men and women. Yeah would not brush their teeth their whole entire lives. Mm -hmm. Don't think their teeth become black and falling out and rotten and yellow because they're drinking tea or chewing shot. They're just not brushing their they're teeth. Brushing their teeth. That, I, I witnessed that in Yemen myself, you know. But um, yeah, the manners that the Kufar learned from us, they're mm -hmm. now teaching us. Yeah, that is scary. Yeah. That is 100% if, if you look, If you look at Canada, Canada in general is like, not it's like so little racism in Canada, um, even yeah. amongst the, the the white folk and the, you know the general Canadians. It's not really much racism at all. Mm. You know, when I went to Saudi, I've never experienced more racism in my entire life. That's that's the truth. I I've I've experienced more racism in my entire life in Saudi Arabia than I ever experienced in Canada. I love Saudi. Don't get me wrong. I love Saudi. Saudi is like, you know, it was an amazing experience. You know, but again, it's because the way that the Muslims look at racism as something that's the norm. You know, this is a true story. Okay, I'm going to tell this story okay. real quick right. before we close out. You know, I was uh, with one of my students, and um, you know what? In life, nah, uh, uh, don't cover the charge by. Hey, whoa! Don't charge the the. Cover, just the book, I man. Don't, don't book the cover, book, I. Don't, whatever, don't do it, just don't do it.